H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So let me open Visual Studio. Okay, so if you're if you're seeing this Visual Studio, so how do we declare? I want to declare a variable called marks. So I want to declare a variable called marks, which is uh, which is an array, which is an array of type integer. So how do we declare in C sharp? Uh, and this will have around six six subjects. So now I want to declare an array uh, whose name is marks and whose size is six. So how do we declare in C sharp? So I got from Sandhya one response and I'm expecting response from others. I want to declare, yeah, I got response from Padmini. So how about others? How to declare an array of size 6 and uh, of type integer and variable name marks? How do you declare an array? So I want to see the answers from others. How do I declare an array of uh, array? name of the array is marks okay so so this is how we need to declare an array so int of int of marks is equal to new int of size 6 so this is how we need to declare an array so now let's try to understand what is a collection so a collection is also similar to arrays which is also a group of uh, a group of data types but still but still let's see why we need collections and what is the advantage of collections and what is the disadvantage of collections today okay so now before going to get before going to start with the collections i should explain you uh, what are there is something called object there is something called object which is which is super data type object is a super data type which is reference type which can store any type of value so object obj you can actually give like this uh, you can give magnad or or for example or you can give um, let me let me create uh, object obj or or you can even assign obj is equal to 5 or you can assign anything so obj is equal to obj is equal to str in the string and see now so so object is object is is a reference data type which can store any type of data but so it is like it is like a reference variable object so so you need to remember so object is uh, is something like a super object in c sharp which can store any data type any data type so yeah yeah right an object uh, if you create an object so let me put here uh, let me put here p so so p is an object p is an object of of type object so when you create an instance of this variable object you can store any data type in that okay so now now but the only disadvantage of this when you want to for example for example i am giving i am giving int okay no, no, we we have here. See, when I when I declare p is equal to um, p is equal to uh, Ravi, so now first time I have assigned uh, assigned Meghnath for p, and then I have assigned p is equal to five. So this Meghnath will be overwritten by this five. Next time when I assign Ravi, this five will be overwritten by uh, by this by this by this Ravi. So now if I print like this, if I write console dot write line console dot write line, so that will have that will have now what it will print now when it do when it do like this console dot read line so console dot read line so it will print Ravi now so so let's execute this let's see the output so but this will not happen when with any other objects for example for example if it is not an object data type okay so only one value will yeah correct so when you assign uh, some value for a variable the recently assigned one will be stored in the variable so it will not it will not hold all these three at a time 
it will only hold the recently assigned value similarly take for example take for example when i do int age int age is equal to 25 int age is equal to 25 now i assign age is equal to 29 and also i assign age is equal to uh, 50 so now when i when i print the value of age only the recently assigned one will be stored in the age so it will it will not store these two anymore it will only store the recently assigned value so the prob the difference between uh, other data types and the object data type is so an integer value can only store integer values i mean integer uh, variable can only store integer values it cannot store if you assign age is equal to magna it will throw the error straight away it will throw the compilation error so it will not allow you to store other than other than integers see now when i move the mouse here cannot implicitly convert string to integer so it is throwing an error because this is of integer but but since object is a super object object is a super data type object is a super data type which can store any type of value it can store string or it can store it can store integer it can store an object or it can store whatever you want it can be you can store inside an object data type okay so now an object will have an object data type will have four methods so when i put dot here so when i put dot here i'm seeing four methods so these are called methods so so i'll also explain what are methods later what how to create methods for for a class and all so please keep in mind we have four methods for object i'll explain later but you should tell me what are the method names when i ask next time so we have dot equals dot get hash code dot get type and dot to string dot to string so we'll be using very frequently dot to string but also the other three also keep in mind i'll ask in the next class uh, there are four methods for an object equals get hash code get type and to string okay now uh, now I'll tell you what is the use of that equals now say for example I have object P and I have another object Q object Q is equal to Ravi now if I want to check the equality of these two I can actually do if I can write here P dot to string or to string equals q dot to string so i can do like this i'm just converting that to to string and i'm just writing here console dot write line uh, equal so 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 i'm not sure i i i'm sure we have not used to string before so else console dot write line not equal okay so till now we would have used convert dot to string so wherever we have we want to convert to integer so we have used convert dot to int to int 32 and we have written console dot read line okay so now if you want to use uh, if you want to convert uh, to string so there are two ways to do one is you can do convert dot to string uh, to string and then you can put p here and and you can e you can check equal to convert dot to string you can put q here so so you can check this way inside this if condition uh, inside this if condition you can actually you could have actually written this or or you can also do p dot to string so p dot to string is equal to q dot to string so what will be the answer now if i execute this to it, what what will be the answer do you think these two are equal or not equal so these two are not equal because q p is magna then q is ravi so when i execute this i'll see the output as not equal okay now now what will be the output when i when i change it to make not so it will be equal so let me execute this okay so now for that purpose what we have is we can actually use one the inbuilt method which you have p dot equals okay so p dot equals q i am okay so let me let me execute this see see the difference so we can use this inbuilt methods so now let me quickly ask question so what are the four methods that we have uh, for object can you ping me if you can recollect it i'm sure i just i didn't show that for a long time but uh, i'll be explaining that methods later in the class so let me see who will ping who will ping the methods so one method is uh, equals 
and any anyone remember what are other methods so i got the answers from babita and uh, sarika so we have equals we have two string and we have get hash code and get type perfect so i got response from uh, at least three to four students so okay so that's good so now i'll be explaining the remaining uh, objects uh, remaining objects in the later class uh, so remaining methods in the later class for now you should know that you should know that object is of super type okay so now now let's start with collections okay so now um, the namespace which is used for collections is the namespace which is used for collections is using system dot collections so all the collections which we are going to use down the line we have uh, we have the namespace called using system dot collections okay now let's see one example of a collection so we have uh, we have a collection called array list so array list is a collection so if you have any doubt whether that's a collection that belongs to collection or not so the moment you type array list so the moment you type array list so you can see here uh, you can see here uh, this is the class array list and this is the namespace so so this confirms that uh, yeah yeah so okay so i got a question so i'll explain that in a while yeah yeah collections are generic i'll explain i'll explain in a while so if you see here we have system dot collections dot array list so that means that means your array list actually belongs to which namespace it belongs to system dot collections so that is how for example if you take console dot read line so console uh, console when i type console you can see that we have system dot console that means console belongs to system namespace console belongs to system namespace all of you know that already similarly similarly when you type array list when you type array list you can see that the namespace which which belongs to array list so so now system dot collections dot array list so array list belongs to the namespace system dot collections okay so i am getting questions like what is the use of system dot collections dot generic so i'll discuss in after half an hour about this okay now now let me declare an array list and see the difference so array list is also collection of uh, data types so so let me type array list array list al is equal to new array list so now the good thing about array list is or the advantage of array list over arrays is you don't need to mention the size when declaring okay straight away you can add al dot add al dot add uh, al dot add for 50 or a or or you can write like this al dot add 95 okay so so that is one good thing so you don't need to mention the size of uh, size of uh, variable while declaring an array list or while declaring a collection so that is the advantage of collections over generics so so in arrays while declaring the value you have to mention the size otherwise it will not be it will not take it will not take and, and that disadvantage of having that way is down the line in c sharp code imagine you have some 500 lines so you want to add one more value for the array you have to come to the top and change the size and then add the seventh element and then again you realize that you have to add ninth element or tenth element you have to come to the top and you have to change the size of the array and then you have to add it so for that reason we have something called collections so collections are also like uh, collection is also a uh, uh, group of data types and uh, we don't need to specify size while declaring okay now when i'm adding here al dot add when i put brackets so what is the type i'm adding here so what is the type i'm adding here for a collection what is the type i'm adding here so since i'm adding an object i'm adding a type object so even i can add magnat so this will not throw me any error this will not throw me any error but by mistake i have added magnat which is uh, this is actually supposed to be marks marks 2 okay so this is supposed to be marks 2 so i'll tell the shortcut i'll tell this tip for you so when you are changing a variable name when you are see i have al here four places 
so I don't need to modify when I want to change this variable name from AL to marks to okay you just press control hold control and dot and, and press enter so you can actually rename all the places you don't need to worry about uh, so now I have marks already here so let me play let me put let me do control Z and let me rename it to marks 2 marks 2 I can just put control dot so see now I'm just typing again so I have AL here yeah yeah so I'll, I'll tell again uh, I'll tell again and again on this one because this is very good tip which we use very frequently as a developer I have array list AL and it is totally referenced in four times now I decided to change the variable name from AL to marks2 I want to change this to marks2 so I can actually type here marks2 and press control dot control dot enter okay or so it is not changed now I am repeating again marks2 and then control dot press enter okay so it will uh, apply so it has changed all the four places so repeat I repeat here change the variable name and press control plus dot dot symbol okay or if you think this is confusing so what you can do is just uh, just change this to marks and you will see a red small underline there so select that it will come like this click on this and rename AL to max okay so so click on this so that will rename to max okay so now let me rename to let me rename to max 2 max 2 I'm seeing here I'm seeing here this red red line under that when I rename it you will see a small rectangle below that variable so you you need to click on that rectangle which you are seeing here so just click on that rectangle when you click on that rectangle you will see an option called rename AL to marks 2 when you select that it will rename all the references this is specially useful when your code is scattered and uh, you want to rename all the places either you should go for search and replace or this is the best option to do okay now so now marks 2 I want to store only marks but by mistake I have added I have added a string here so this will not throw you any error because because what is the type of uh, what is the type which you are adding for a collection when you put add what is the type you are adding is it a string or is it is it uh, is it an integer so it is an object so what are the data types objects can hold an object can hold any data type all the data types can be hold by an object so that is the disadvantage of using collections the disadvantage of using collections is uh, uh, if you by mistake if you try to uh, add some data type which is not intentional it will not throw you any any error okay so collections are not type safe collections are not type safe because you are adding an object all the time okay so what is the advantage of array, array I mean what is the advantage of collection over arrays what is the advantage of collections over arrays all of you ping me in the chat window the answer what is the advantage of collection over arrays yeah so so yeah I got response from I'm getting response from all of you so please uh, please ping me the answer what is the advantage of collections over arrays yeah all of you others uh, I'm seeing uh, Bhavik uh, Jesse Padmini Parimala and uh, Seema Sarika so so I saw a response from some of you. Please ping me. Uh, please ping me the ans answer. Uh, actually, uh, I can't type the answer. I am attending the class through mobile. Okay. Uh, that's why. Okay. Okay. No problem. Yeah. So for those who can uh, type the answer, you can you can answer. Okay. So the advantage of collections or arrays is we need not mention the size while declaring the array okay so okay so that is the advantage okay so now now so this is how we for for arrays 
we assign the values like this max of 0 max of 0 max of 0 is equal to is equal to uh, 97 and we assign like this max of 1 is equal to 100 so this is how we assign values for arrays and how are we adding for for collections we are doing like this max dot add max 2 dot add so using this method add we are actually assigning the values we are not using uh, we are not we are not following this way this methodology for arrays for for collections okay now if you want to uh, so if you want to do some of these two 54 and 59 so for example if I want to add these two so how we can do that so uh, we can do like this in sum is equal to max of uh, max of 0 plus max of 1 so this is how you normally do if you want to add the elements of an array now this sum will store uh, the 97 plus 100 so this will store 197 so now if you want to add int sum 2 is equal to we even we, we do the same way max of 2 of even you can give the same way max of 2 of 0 plus max of 2 of 1 but but now you cannot do this way so what is the type of this max 2 of 0 what is the type what is the type of this uh, this this element is it integer yeah it is an object but what is this side this side it is an integer so so you cannot you cannot assign you cannot add assign this object to an integer that is one other drawback of using other drawback of using collections so every time you have to typecast every time I mean you have to typecast when you want to store or when you want to add the number so what you need to do here you have to write here convert dot to int 32 okay and then you have to write like this uh, Sandhya I am not able to hear you uh, okay you want to ask a question okay okay ping the question I mean I think there is some problem with your uh, microphone so you can ping the question okay so here you need to type uh, okay okay I'll explain that yeah so here uh, here we have to write convert dot to int okay to int 32 to int 32 I'm writing here okay so so this is how you have to do so every time when you want to retrieve some integer value from from the collection you have to typecast it so so what is this converting object to value type what is this what do we call this one as is it a boxing or unboxing so max2 is a reference type and I'm trying I'm trying to convert that to integer so this this is called what I saw one response I need to see a response from all of you converting reference to value type what do we call yeah it is called unboxing so now so every time doing uh, doing like this will make you I mean it it's not uh, performance wise do you think this is this is faster okay yeah so 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 that is a disadvantage of collections so now can someone tell me what are the two disadvantages of collections the first disadvantage is the first disadvantage of collections is it's not type safe you need to uh, you can add any type of data and the second disadvantage is performance wise since if you want to add or if you want to uh, do any operations which you can do on value types you have to do unboxing okay so that is the second disadvantage okay now I got a question saying like uh, can I add uh, so because I have to add marks dot add at uh, first place in the middle so how can you do that yeah we can do that we have a lot of methods for collections so I'll be explaining one by one so so I'll store I'll tell you what are the methods in the collections and what how you can insert or all those things I'll tell uh, in some time okay now okay 
so this is about uh, this is about collections and uh, we have a lot of a uh, lot more details about collections but keep these two in mind with this uh, we'll see what are the different collections we have so so the first collection which we saw is array list and you should know how to add elements into array list is using dot add method and you should know how to retrieve the elements from array list it is using uh, using index marks of 0 marks of 1 like that okay so now if you want to print the elements of array either you can go for using a for loop or you can go for using a for each loop so we'll discuss now uh, about what is the use of for loop and what is the use of for each loop now if i want to print the elements of array using for loop using for loop so what i need to do is i need to write for int i is equal to 0 i less than i less than or equal to i less than or equal to what is the size uh, currently how many elements i have in marks how many elements i have i have only two i assigned only two so i need to give less than or equal to three or less than or equal to two what do i need to give here so let me give less than or equal to two i plus plus and i need to give here console dot right line i need to give here marks of i so do you think this will throw me any error or do, we, do I need to correct somewhere so as I said before array index starts from 0 array index starts from 0 so what do I need to give here i less than or equal to or i less than i less than 2 I need to give because array starts from 0 so it will print marks of 0 and it will come back again i value 1 1 less than 2 it will print marks of 1 and i value becomes 2 so 2 less than 2 it will come outside it will come outside okay so so this is how we need to write to print the values to print the values so now let's try to understand what is a for for each loop so using a for loop for sure you should know that what is the size of this array but when you are using for each loop see now for each int mark in marks so we can you can actually do like this so so now you don't need to you don't need to worry about this so console dot right line you can just type mark okay so okay so here i'm just writing for each int m or or i can just put int m so let me rename to m control dot i replaced the mark with m so for each for each int m in marks console dot right line m so now what will happen is it will take the first element from max and print it it will take the second element from max and print it it will take the third element if it is there it will print it so you don't need to worry about the size so when you are using can we use for each to get the values in regular array uh, what do you mean by this question uh, Padmini can you explain a bit Uh, I'm just asking like uh, if I need to get a value like a, a value of a mark of zero and I need to calculate something so in a regular array can we use a for each loop and uh, like the same thing in uh, I uh, some value in uh, marks uh, no. And, uh, I'm no 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 because when you are using okay so I'll I'll mute you just a second <coughs> okay so so that's a good question actually so here uh, if you see when you are using for each loop it will take it will take element by element first element second element third element but when you are proceeding with that it will not have any idea that what is the number of that element what is the what is the index of that element so but the advantage of using for each loop is you need not worry about the size yeah okay okay so now okay okay so when you are using for each loop when you are using for each loop the good thing is you don't need to mention the size you don't need to worry about the size 
so now uh, now when I have some thousand lines of code and now I need to write a for loop uh, to print the elements of array I should go to the top I should go to the top of the file and I should I should see that what is the size uh, how many number of elements are there in the array so why should you care for it so you should not care for it so you can just simply write for for each loop so do you think all of you agree with me that writing a for each loop is hundred times better than writing a for loop okay so it's very much uh, better especially when you are using arrays and collections please go for using for each you don't need to worry about size of an array or even you don't need to so now now let me run this so when it can see at indexes how will it know the last value okay so it will take element by element so for example for example uh, how for each loop will work is how for each loop will work is let me explain how for each loop will work so it will have it will have like this okay now i have here 97 and i have here 80 and i have here 76 and i have here 92 so for each for each element for each i'll run the i'll run so for each element so what it'll do m in marks so first it'll take first element first element and it'll store in m next second element store in m third element store in m fourth element store in m and it'll see is the next element is available or not if it is not available it'll stop there okay so it'll it'll keep on printing element by element element by element and then it'll stop somewhere that's all now let's try to execute this program so so i'll i'll comment all the unnecessary code which i have used uh, before so i commented this i have commented this now let's try to run that so so let me comment this as well so let me run this see we are seeing 9700 all are four all zeros why it is showing all zeros is because because you have actually given here new int okay so when you write like this new int 6 so so when you write like this new int of 6 so it will actually declare array which will have for example now let's let's see here it will declare an array like this with all the values as zeros 0 0 0 0 0 okay so f that is the use of writing new like this when you in instantiate value with new int of 6 so what it will do is it will initialize all the values to zeros and then it will assign now when you assign 97 it will first print 97 and then it will print 100 okay and then it will store 100 here the remaining values are zeros okay so that is the reason why we are getting here all zeros okay so now now when I use uh, when I use a for each loop for marks to see the difference I am using here marks to now you will not see any zeros you will see exactly two elements 54 and 95 that is the advantage of uh, one more advantage of using uh, using collections so you will not see all the zeros like how you are seeing in how you are seeing in uh, arrays so let me run this and see the difference we will see 54 and 95 you know I'm saying 5495 okay so so anyway but still if you have if you have six subjects in the in your code you would have already added the values for values for six subjects see now like this you would have added so you would have added like this all the subjects two three and four and five okay and then you would have written the subject marks here like 89 6 76 92 93 45 88 so so you would have already had like this and then you will type here for each m in marks uh, you will you will print it so it will for for each loop will take care of number size you don't need to mention the size here that is the advantage of using for each loop okay so now uh, someone is asking question int array memory is allocated int array memory is allocated to size what is that yeah so now when you declare an array 
of size 6 so what happens is inside the computer inside the computer so it will it will continuously allocate the memory for example let me uh, let me show you so so imagine you have your computer memory memory like this okay so when you declare an array in 6 so what happens is total memory it will allocate F total memory required for this integer what is the total size required for this uh, six elements of marks you can bring me the what it what will be the size of marks in in memory in size of memory it is 24 because each integer takes four bytes and six fours are 24 so 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 it will it will allocate for first element for second element for third element for fourth element for fifth element and for sixth element so like this it will allocate 24 character 24 bytes sequentially okay so sequentially it will allocate uh, allocate in the memory okay so now okay so i think i'll i'll just summarize very quickly so arrays are collection of similar data types and when you want to when you are declaring an array you have to mention size of it when you are declaring an array you have to mention size of it now collections are also similar to arrays uh, which are which are collection of uh, data types but not necessarily similar data types okay so collections uh, will be adding uh, adding an object uh, every time when we add we'll be adding an object so okay now <coughs> collections are not type safe because because you can add any type of data into it so so by mistake if you have added uh, added magna into into an, a collection of marks it will not throw you any compilation error and the second thing is when you are using collections you have to do typecasting uh, very frequently because you c it is since it is an object when you try to assign that value to an integer you have to typecast it you have to do convert dot to int and all okay and the good thing about both arrays and collections is you can use a for each loop uh, instead of using a for loop you can use a for each loop for each int m in marks you can just you can just print the values okay so is it clear now all of you okay so i'm getting a question what if i want to take values dynamically for a list say 100 again we have to use for each so uh, what if i want to take values dynamically for a list say 100 i want to take values dynamically so okay so for example i want to read 100 values into into an into an array list okay so see here so let's remove all this code okay so let's remove all this code so now i have an array list array list ar is equal to or array list marks is equal to new array list and here for for int i is equal to i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to uh, i less than or equal to 10 i plus plus i have to add so here i want to add 10 sub 10 marks into the into array list so what i can do here console dot right line enter marks okay and here i can simply write here marks dot add uh, okay i can actually write here okay even even i can actually put here uh, obj object object o is equal to i can write here console dot read line i can simply add marks dot add o okay so now if i want to if i want to print the values while printing i can simply use for loop see now here i'm giving 10 because i'm giving 10 because i want to add 10 marks and but while printing i don't need to write a for loop i can write a for each loop for each for each mark uh, for each m in marks for each int m in marks i can simply write here console dot write line m okay so so here let me give something like uh, console dot read line write line printing the marks below 
okay so let me run this let me run this so okay I missed a semicolon there I'm getting an error so let me add that and let me run this okay so enter marks so let me enter 10 marks here very quickly so 1 2 3 okay 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and one more marks 10 now I have added 10 marks uh, using for loop now if I'm printing here using for each loop see now printing the marks below and uh, for each mark for each M okay now I got an exception why I got the exception you have to tell me now so what is actually every element in marks is what what type is that every element in marks inside marks it is not integer it is not integer I told already in in a collection it is not it is not a uh, value type it is an object so so the mistake which I did here is uh, I need I need to put here H2K emphasis provides world-class online IT training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide H2K emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands-on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one-time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes H2K emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide for a free demo class visit us at h2kemphasis.com